Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pup date time, week 46. Uh, crazy, week 46 already. Time's just flying by, and this monster is definitely growing. Uh, just wild to think how old he is now from where we started. But uh, anyway, if you're new to this channel, I do these types of videos every single week on my Bull Mastiff Tua. And uh, I basically just do these videos to try to create a great log of information as he turns another week older, basically what I'm experiencing and going through. So he's 46 weeks old exactly today. And I just, like I said, I just want to create a great log of information just with my experiences with the Bull Mastiff breed. I touch on things from his physical size, you know, what he's gaining for weight and height. Um, what I'm feeding him, what I'm doing to socialize him, his energy levels, his drooling levels, his barking levels, all kinds of stuff. Um, so go ahead, check out all the videos if you're interested in the breed, and hopefully these can help some people out in their decision-making process when getting a bull mastiff. And also, if he ends up being a great dog like he has been so far, you'll kind of be able to see what I did to shape and mold that in him. Go ahead, check them all out if you're interested in the breed. Usually I try to start these videos out with just some kind of new stuff that I noticed from the week. I will say the one thing this week that kind of stuck out to me the most was it's kind of like a guarding or protection type instinct, I guess I would say. And I'm noticing it mostly in the mornings, the first time that he goes out for the day. After he eats his breakfast, he'll go out in the yard and he'll go to the bathroom and he kind of does like what I would call sort of like a perimeter check. Like he will, he'll walk all around the yard. He wants to sniff this, sniff that, check out this, check out that. And this can be like a 10 to 15 minute process, like sometimes even longer. And he's not really doing anything. He's just kind of, you know, he'll go mark on stuff, pee on stuff. And he just seems like he's checking everything out in the backyard to I guess kind of do like a perimeter check. Like I say, it's almost like this guarding type thing where just making sure everything's in place where it should be and he kind of knows where everything's at. And like I said, it's usually in the morning more so than at night. So I want to say he's just kind of starting his day with that, just making sure his territory is how he left it, how he wants it, making sure everything's in place. Um, so kind of a cool thing, like those guarding instincts kind of kicking in. Does anybody else experience this with their Bull Mastiff? I know there's a lot of uh, owners on the channel, a lot more experienced Bull Mastiff owners than myself. Go ahead, comment on this, let me know. I'd just be curious to see if this is a pretty normal behavior, especially as they age and mature. Another thing new to the week is uh, I did get him a couple new chew toys. I got him another buffalo horn, you guys know I love those, and then a new Nylabone Big Chew is what it's called. It's actually probably my favorite uh, chew toy that we have for him so far. Uh, it's very large. It seems to be very durable. It's supposed to be chicken flavored, I guess. I can't make any comment on that. I, I'm not too sure, but Tua really seems to love it. And like I said, the size of it and everything makes it uh, probably my favorite to this point. Um, and with the buffalo horns, you guys know I love those. I've been using those for a long time. Um, I still like those a lot, but I will say now that two is older and getting bigger and stronger, he's so like incredibly, his, his jaws are just becoming so incredibly strong that he's definitely beginning to crack those a lot sooner than he used to be able to. So those aren't lasting as long now. So just kind of make note on that as your dog ages, gets older, those jaws are going to get a lot stronger and he will be able to start cracking not only those buffalo horn chews a lot quicker, but just dog toys in general. Uh, I said a while ago I completely moved away from the soft toys because he's just chewing those up, you know, in a matter of hours. So there's really no point in having those soft toys around anymore unless you're perfectly fine, you know, having pretty high turnover rate on those, I guess. Um, and as always, I, I have all the links to... Uh, all the products and toys and stuff like that that I use for Tua down in the comments and in the description as well. If you're interested in seeing what kind of products I'm using for Tua, I update that periodically. So yeah, go ahead, just check it out. Now we'll go ahead and start and touch on the things that I touch on every single week. And we'll start with weight like we always do. Tua was 123 pounds last week and he is 125 pounds now, so he's up another two pounds. Uh, again, we're putting on that weight nice and steady and slow. He uh, 
he uh, he's definitely noticeably filling out, like I always say, or like I have been saying recently. Um, but at the same time, he's not like filling out crazy. Like he's still very, uh, well, not very skinny, but he's still on the skinnier side. He's uh, nice and lean. You can still see his ribs. You can see uh, the muscles in his legs, veins in his legs. He kind of looks like an athlete right now. Like my previous dog was a Doberman Pinscher, and I would compare him to like, you know, a finely tuned athlete. He was just ripped. You could see the muscles under his skin. I would say Tua is kind of like that now, maybe a little bit on the thicker side. And as he gets older, he's obviously going to thicken up more and uh, he's not going to be so, like, I would consider ripped, I guess. Uh, but right now he is on the, uh, the leaner side and we want to keep it that way as long as possible and continue putting on that weight nice and slow. Uh, they're supposed to continue putting on weight for, you know, two to three years. So we got a long way to go yet. And we'll try and uh, continue putting that on nice and slow like we have been. Just kind of monitor it and adjust his food amounts based on that and uh, see how it goes. Now that we're talking about food, that's usually the next thing that I touch on. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I supplement his kibble with raw food. This week we did ground turkey, chicken liver, and apples. And I try to switch these raw foods up, you know, as much as I can, as much as I can find them in the store. There's not like a huge, huge um, line of products that I can kind of get them where I, where I do my grocery shopping. I'm sure if I dug a little bit deeper, I could definitely find more. But I'm, I'm happy with the variety that I'm able to give him right now. And raw diet is just a very good thing to give your dogs. Maybe not full, but you can just supplement kind of like I do just to give them a lot of new nutrients that they wouldn't normally have through their kibble um, in the natural environment you know a dog is they're a, they're a hunter and it basically kind of breaks it down to what they'd be eating if they were still in the wild and it's it just it gives them just a, a big array of different uh, vitamins minerals nutrients and stuff there's a lot of good information online about raw diet to feed your dogs and I would definitely encourage all you guys to look into it, do your own research, ask questions to me if you have any. Like I always say, I'm definitely not an expert in this in this field, but uh, I'm gaining experience myself and I'm really enjoying the raw diet with him and it seems to be going really great with him. Can't find a whole lot of negatives on it, so definitely do your own research, come up with your own ideas and uh, see, see what you want to do. Socialization is another thing I touch on every single week. Um, like I've always say in these videos, we've socialized Tua from a very young age, pretty much from day one when we brought him home. And uh, he's great with people, great with dogs, still try to socialize him as much as I possibly can by just exposing him to new situations, new sights, new sounds, new smells, new people, new animals, new dogs, all kinds of stuff that I'm able to. Um, lately I haven't had the time as much as I did when he was a younger puppy, but it's more important when he's a younger puppy. Uh, this week I, I got him on a few walks and we passed by a lot of people and a lot of dogs, but we didn't make like any contact with those people or dogs. Uh, just just kind of got close and didn't get a chance to play or get pets or anything like that. Uh, my mom also came over a day this week and uh, Tua did great with her. He hadn't seen her for a while. Tua absolutely loves people. When people come over, he has this kind of crazy initial excitement. Not like crazy, but he, he just loves to get pet. And he's so big now that he he's kind of running into people and not knocking them over, but it's kind of like, whoa, like you're going to take my knees out kind of thing. So what I've been doing when new people come over is just keep him on his leash for like the first 10 or 15 minutes. And then when I can tell that he's going to be calm like he normally is, then I'll just go ahead and take that leash off and he's just back to normal old sweet Tua. No big deal at all. Energy is another thing that I touch on every single week. Like I've been saying for a while now, he kind of has two windows during the day where his energy is up. And that's the first two to three hours when we wake up in the morning. And then also kind of the, the last two to three hours of the day, you know, after dinner before we would go to sleep. And other than that, he's a pretty laid back, chill dog all day, you know, in between those, those couple windows. Uh, I do routine, routinely take him for like one to two mile walks and he has no problem completing those at all. The only time that he's even kind of slowed down on those walks is if it's very hot out. Uh, we had some, you know, upper 90 degree days and stuff this summer. And by the end of those longer walks, you know, he, he kind of did start dragging his feet a little bit, but nothing bad. 
So even though his energy level is kind of on the lower end, he still, like I always say, never you know turns down an opportunity to go for a walk or go out in the backyard, run around, play fetch, things like that. As he ages, I'm sure that uh, will start kind of happening because they're definitely known to be on the lazier side. But I wouldn't anticipate that, you know, until he's like three or four years old or something. But we'll go ahead and see. Um, obviously, I'll be here to document it and let you guys know. Drooling is another thing that I touch on every single week. And this one's honestly kind of getting kind of repetitive because it's 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 basically being unchanged here. He, he is a drooler. And he does drool a lot, but 90% of that's related to water. And even though it is becoming repetitive, I know it's like a huge topic, a huge talking point when people are interested in the bull mastiff breed. They want to know how bad the drooling is, so I'm going to keep touching on it. But yeah, like I said, 90% just kind of related to that water. After he drinks, it uh, falls out of his jowls, and it does create quite the mess. But you just have to be there with a rag or paper towel to be ready to wipe his jowls. And then honestly, it's not really a big issue, guys. He will drool in other situations, such as when he's like panting, when we're on walks and it's hot out or something, or he'll get stressed out or excited. But in those situations, the drool isn't as intense as when he's drinking water. So I would say the only time that it's even, you know, somewhat of an issue, at least for me personally, is after he's drinking water. So, but like I said, you know when that's coming, so you just prepare for it with a rag or a paper towel. Barking is the last thing that I touch on every single week. Um, that's still kind of unchanged and the same. It is kind of steadily increasing every week overall, I would say. But like I say every week, it's only related to around our house and around our yard. And I want to say that that's, you know, guarding instinct in him. If he's hearing sounds, you know, near, like if he's outside and he's hearing sounds from like the neighbor's yard or something like that, he'll let out some barks, he'll go investigate, he'll figure out what's going on, and then he'll be over it. Um, if people come to the door, he's kind of hit or miss if he wants to bark. It really depends on the situation. But outside of our house, outside of our yard, he's not a barker at all. Like I say every week, we can, we can go past other dogs, uh, in their yards and they'll be barking at him and he won't bark back. So it, it, it's all related to around our house and around our yard, which I would say is kind of protection instinct, guarding instinct. And uh, I want to say there's only been one or two times ever that I've heard him bark away from our house or away from our yard. So definitely not a big barker. Doesn't just sit out in the backyard, bark for hours on end like some dogs will. But uh, that's pretty much all I have to say on that. And that's pretty much all I have for the week, guys. Go ahead and let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to touch on that I don't already in these videos. And I'll be more than happy to try and do that. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.